You filming already? What's going on guys? On today's episode, we're going to be doing a problem solving, a problem solving series where we take a car that was brought to us by a customer who has done the modifications required to get it to drift. This was an all wheel drive WRX. Now it's a rear wheel drive WRX with some problems, mostly angle kit and geometry problems, which is perfect because I can solve those really easily. Whereas other people, don't understand it or don't know how to do it or don't have the tools, whatever it is. This car had the mods done and they were done completely wrong. The Ackerman was way off. The one thing that they did do correct was extend the lowers and get us the right track width to uh, have an optimal drifting to get lots of clearance, but that's where it all ended. So we need to make caster plates. We need to make new knuckles that have proper Ackerman and we're gonna try and do Ackerman adjustment. We're gonna see if we can make a product that's going to be sellable because that's ultimately the goal get a product that works and then let people enjoy it and have fun drifting. This car is super interesting though. It's got a forward rear end put in it, dual caliper brackets put on it. The center diff of the all wheel drive transmission was welded so that it can just be a rear wheel drive car and it's actually pretty reliable. The WRX motor puts out, I don't know what it is, 280 horsepower, something like that. You can tune them and boost them and do other things to uh, get more power. Um, they already come turboed so there's lots of things and there's lots of reasons why people might want to drift these cars. They're not too expensive and they're fun. So let's take a look on the inside as they have some pretty tasteful mods done and it's done really clean. Oh. Classic Subaru. No idea by the picture what that button does. So like you're, you either think the key well, I have a key, so I'm gonna unlock it, but you push it wrong. That means locked. Wrong. Uh, so they couldn't have done a worse, like a more controversial decision on if which way is unlock or unlock, but that's besides the point. Uh, they got their nice fire extinguisher. They got their handbrake really nicely concealed in the console. And then while I was pulling it, I could hear something kind of clicking back here. I open up this. There's the reservoir, so he's running a linkage all the way through here to his uh, master cylinder and reservoir. And you know what? It feels pretty good. It's in a good spot, about two inches away from the wheel. Maybe a bit low for, for me. I kind of like it to be a bit higher, but um, yeah, it's super clean. Nice wheel. And otherwise, he's got a, a pretty nifty GoPro mount here. Some nice stars on the roof. Anyways, this is all you need to have a blast. So we're gonna fix up his front geometry and uh, show you guys kind of the process and the problem solving aspects of it. So when we look at it, we analyze why it's so bad, why it doesn't work. We'll show you how bad the Ackerman is. It's probably 15 degrees of Ackerman, like a lot. So basically the lead wheel is like at quite a bit of angle and the trail wheel is just dragging. It's dragging along. So we're gonna show you that and how we're gonna solve it uh, and yeah. That's, that's it, let's do it. Cam, check out the handbrake. Well, you didn't install, but that ain't an FDF one. No, I know. What do you think the master is? Under the center console? No. Oh, it's the remote Lift one. up the... No. Lift up that. It's got a linkage. That's pretty spicy. Yeah. It's neat. Clean. Super clean. So now that we've got the car on the hoist, we can really get a good look at what's going on underneath. It looks like he has some adjustable control arms and he has a relocated tie rod on the steering knuckle. Um, a couple things on to point out right off the bat is that this is, you gotta pick up on notable differences between all the chassis that we've done. So this chassis is a front steering rack car with a control arm that is a compression style, meaning 
the loads on the control arm are going to be compressing on this joint and pivoting on this joint. So that's something to consider when you're designing the control arm. So this is very similar to a BMW, uh, where you have a front steering rack with a compression style control arm. So on a front steering rack car, it's important to know that if you want to decrease or minimize your Ackerman, you need to move the outer tie rods inward toward the engine, inward towards the center of the car. And if you want it to increase or go towards positive Ackerman, you want to move the outer tie rods outward. So with that in mind, we're going to take a quick look at what's been done here. And it looks like the position that it was re-drilled wasn't moved inward or outward. It was just simply moved in. So the only thing that they had achieved was shortening the steering ratio so that he could get more angle. And what you result in is the tires contacting the control arm here and it is absolutely nowhere near touching anything here because we actually still have factory positive Ackerman. And on a daily driven car, there is generally quite a bit of Ackerman, 10, 12, 14 degrees. Depends on the wheelbase, depends on the chassis, depends on a couple of things. All wheel drive cars also have different sets of Ackerman uh, with them. But if you take a look from like below the car looking up, you can see that it is pretty bad. So we're not gonna take away from positive Ackerman because it actually has good handling characteristics, but what you're gonna find is that it drags the wheel in the corner um, and kind of fights the, the tires against each other. Just the basics of drifting requires to be in a perfect world on a computer simulation, you would actually be in a negative Ackerman setup at all times. Let's say if the front wheels had to be on rails, like a, like a train then they would be negative Ackerman all the time. But uh, in reality, we're on tires, tire scrub, all kinds of different things are happening dynamically. So a lot of people like running positive Ackerman, but definitely not this much. So generally when we make adjustable Ackerman, we are doing anywhere from zero to plus two or minus two in either direction. And you can go in between that as well. And that is the degree difference at full lock. So it's pretty minor. Like the slot width that we usually put on our knuckles is about 15 millimeters wide or close to 5 eighths wide. And that's the amount that you can move the outer tie rod towards the outside of the car or towards the inside of the car. And that will change your Ackerman a various amount of degrees. Like it, again, it depends on the chassis, but that's generally what, what you'll see on our kits and, and a majority of other kits as well. Um, so that's what we're going to do with this. That's just pointing out the simple problem that is with this car and we're going to solve it. We're also going to make lower control arms and a couple other things to add to it, but what we're doing for him is probably just knuckles. So. And that's going to be it for this video. There was a lot of information in there just telling you what we're basically analyzing what this car is and what we should do. On the next video, we're gonna go into making all these corrections and uh, turning it into an actual product that uh, we'll install and compare. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe and check us out and if you're interested, uh, that was bad.